Before she first met him, she was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but not like the others. Barely functioning, she rarely left the house. Her father, Zimbel, made sure of that. Only occasionally did she venture out on her own, collecting firewood and herbs. Errands out in the Orkney Plains. That was her world. Like this one. Barren and lonely. His father's hall was built around a great tree, and one day, Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try, but the sword only comes out at Sigmund's touch. His brother-in-law, King Sigir, wants it, but Sigmund refuses it. So King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast, but when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. King Sigir captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his coveted sword, and readies them for execution.
light will stretch out to last forever. It's a trick. It's an illusion. It's not real. Don't you feel You want to believe it's real, but it's a trick. You're deluded. Where are you going? Where is she going? What is she following? You can't even fight. It's just deception. How does he so effortlessly call for the world and bliss? If only she could do the same. See the world through eyes anew. And dance with it. Just like he does. What's your name? Senwa. I haven't seen you before. I'm not. I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait. Who taught you to fight like that? No one. <laughs> no one? Well, I, I watched you and... You... Learned all of that from watching me? <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. Me? I'm Dillian. I'm here for the warrior trials. Just come and watch. And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who's supposed to reassure you. Feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. But her world changed the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide, and don't tell them. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Shut up! As Sigmund and Sinfjotli are being buried alive, Sigmund's sister throws an armful of straw into the grave mound. Hidden in the straw is Sigmund's sword, the gift of Odin. They cut their way out of the grave mound and set fire to Sigir's hall. The king burns to death. 
Sigmund calls to his sister to come out so that she may live and be honored. She does come out, but only to tell him the truth. That she had slept with him, her brother, to beget a strong avenger. I am not fit to live, she says, and walks back into the fire. Strike vengeance from your heart, Senua, as there is always a heavy price to pay. Here is the end of Sigmund's story. He was a fierce and great warrior who fought many battles. But one day, an old man came onto the battlefield. Although shadowed by a hood, Sigmund saw that he only had one eye. The man raised his spear, and Sigmund struck at it with his sword, but the sword shattered into pieces. Sigmund then knew that this was Odin, and thus that victory could not be his. He bowed his head and accepted his end. Dying, he tells his wife that she is with child and that her son will one day make a great weapon out of the fragments of his sword. The sword named Gram. tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur. The second son of Odin, he was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him, only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die.
It's dangerous. Don't go near it. Don't go there. Don't go too close. Where are we? What is this? It's the same. It's another world. It's lighter. It's nicer. I like it here. Can we stay? Let's stay here. You can feel it. You need the runes to fight Dillian. You need Dillian. He's waiting for you. He always said he... he he's close. He cares about you. He's close. He loves you. through it. It's dangerous. Follow it. What's behind the gate? Where will it take you? It's not safe. Dillian. There he is. There he is. What are you waiting for? Quick, find a way. Find him. Go through him. Dillian, don't lose him. Way too many Where is he? He's so... We're in the wrong world. He's not here. She's in the wrong world. He's not in this world. He's in the other one. He's in the other one. He's in the dark world. The dark. The dark world. The world once seemed so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian told her to see further. To peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the gloom. Senna explored new paths into the unknown. Senna, you've got it. Why isn't he here? He's gone. He's in the dark world. He's gone to the dark world. You're in the dark world. He's in the other world. The dark world. Without you. The gods feast and rejoice and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe Baldur's mother confesses, I thought it was too young. Oh dear. Do you remember what love feels like? He was the only one she could trust. Could she trust you? Loki makes a dart out of mistletoe and goes to the gods as they throw things at Baldur. The blind god, Huth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taking part. Huth says, I cannot see where Baldur stands, and even if I could see him, 
I have no weapon. Loki replies, Here is a wand. I will tell you where he stands. And Hurth throws the mistletoe at Baldur. It pierces through him, and to everyone's horror, Baldur is killed. And for this, Hurth is slain. never let her go, and she was caught between two worlds, that of Zinbel and her past, and Dilly, you have no time for this. futures, two realities tearing at her soul. The Northmen tell how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst into flames. When Baldur's wife sees his body carried onto the ship, her heart bursts with grief and she dies. She is put next to her husband, and the pyre is lit, sending the dead to hell. But even so, the gods cannot accept his death. He was the only one that didn't mind the curse. He loved us. Overcome with grief, the gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are they? asks Hela. We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur, weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone, trees, metal, everything. Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let hell keep what she has. 
The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise. Nobody else did. The Northmen tell how the gods punished Loki for Baldur's death. They captured him and took him to a cave. They fetched his two sons and turned one into a wolf, and he ripped his brother apart. The gods used Loki's own son's entrails to tie him down and turned these bonds to iron, and dangled a poisonous serpent over his face so that its venom would drip onto him. Each time the venom drips onto Loki's face, he writhes in agony. The Northmen say that is the cause of earthquakes. A reminder, perhaps, that if even gods must accept death, then so must we. He's the reason she keeps fighting. What if this is pointless? What are you doing? Why did you think you could make this work? You keep seeing runes. You see runes everywhere. We're liars, God. You think it makes sense, but really the gods are playing with you. It makes sense in your mind, but it doesn't make sense in the world. The gods But it doesn't mean anything. You can't read this language, you don't understand. Six. Dillian never much cared for the underworld. And looked dimly upon the druids, like her father, Zinbel. I guess he took after his father, a chieftain who believed nothing he couldn't see. And he happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms, had to see the world through his eyes. And slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. You're going to fall, careful. No, she's not. She's not going to fall. She's strong. She's steady. She can do it. You can do it, Sim. Be very, very careful. You can't miss a part, don't make him slip away. It's a narrow, narrow bridge. And there's a long way to fall. Oh, no! He's gone. It's your fault. He's disappeared. You've lost him. Cinema. 
Your father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. My own father was born blind. Doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. The word dark to him means as little as the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. Should we fix them by taking away their sight? You give up the beautiful world thing. You, and only you can see just to be rid of your nightmares. Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? The gift that makes you so special in my head. Just another part of the person I know. I left for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it made it worse. I'm so sorry. It's done. 